We're gonna fix the cooling today. Oh, dude, I day. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Import Modify, where we left off last time. We stopped with rolling the fenders and we were gonna install that front radiator fan. So, uh, just I was tired that day. I didn't really want to do it because the clearance issues and everything, I really need to get into the front of this car. So I'm gonna take the front bumper cover off and expose everything in order to do that. And I just wasn't feeling it. And once I edited the video, it was quite long and I decided to do another episode. So here we are again with the Z31 Turbo. And uh, we gotta get this thing right. So we got that slim line Mishimoto fan up here. <clears throat> right there, I already trimmed back the uh, zip ties and everything, so we got that ready to go. And we gotta tap into the wiring that I have already existing for the uh, Mishimoto fan already installed on the rear. So we'll be doing that right here. This is where I have everything set up with the relay and a fuse panel right there. So we're gonna be taking this bumper cover off and I was looking at the ding that I have on this uh, front fender right there and as you can see it's a little pushed in and I have a ding right there so I'm gonna take my body hammer and uh, that little flat piece that I have to put on the uh, opposite side and we're gonna try to straighten that out a little bit so I'm gonna do that along with the fan and then after we get that all set up we're gonna go ahead and uh, get it up to temperature have them both come on and for the time being I was looking at the tire situation from the last episode and uh, I think I'm just gonna add some negative camber to it for the time being I did look online to see how much uh, you know two tires would cost me and they're quite affordable these are the uh, lion hearts and uh, I don't know much about these tires you know I just got them because you know they were cheap and uh, they are 40k rated tire and that's for a perfectly uh, set up suspension. So with negative camber, expect, expect that to be cut in half really. But um, yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do for now is I'm gonna tuck this in a little bit just to make sure that I don't interfere with the uh, fenders. And uh, I've been on the fence about buying that, uh, that, uh, <clears throat> that Heim joint kit for the, uh, the rear suspension and uh that thing's like thousand dollars thousand something bucks for that kit and it's got to be welded in but I, uh, the more that i look at it i mean i'm gonna i'm gonna eventually just have to uh, bite the bullet on that and buy that so i do have a welder now that's capable of uh doing that so i guess you know once my money situation gets better i'm just gonna bite the bullet and uh purchase that kit so that I can fully adjust the rear suspension and get, uh, you know, uh, the the camber and everything corrected on that. That's a big problem with these cars is uh, the old school lower control arm that's mounted to the cross member. It you only got uh, a very small amount of adjustment on the camber settings, and uh, a lot of the newer cars have the camber settings up on the top uh, strut. These do not have that, so they have that little ear piece that you can buy a camber kit to kind of offset it in that little ear piece and uh, it's just not enough so you know if you're gonna own one of these Z these z31 turbos uh, be prepared to put in the work because I put a lot of work in this car and uh, it's still not there so uh, yeah you gotta have a love for these cars and uh, the more that I work on it, the more I actually do enjoy and love the car. And it is unique. I mean, when you're rolling down the road and something like this, it's an eye catcher. Not many people have it. And if they do have it, you know, chances are it's not going to be like this. It's going to be more stock. But uh, anyway, it does show off what I can do. And uh, I, I learned a lot on this car and I'm still learning a lot on this car. So enough of the rambling on. We're gonna go ahead now and take off this front bumper cover and expose it all. And we're gonna mount that radiator fan and get things wired in. Wheels are off, exposing everything. So you have four studs right here. One, two, 
three, four. Take those nuts off. And it's the same on the other side as well. One, two, three, four. Your connector for the turn signal right there. It's also the same on the other side. And there's some bolts up here. I can't see it because it's up, but bolts right there. And then you take this off. Now I do have this front lip. A lot of people are asking me about this lip. This lip right here is a JDM lip. I got it from, uh, it's an MSA Auto brand. I got it from uh, zcarparts.com, I think. No, I think zcarparts.com. Don't quote me on that. Before the episode's over, I'll let you guys know where I got it from. A lot of y'all have been asking me where did I get it from, and uh, I'll find out for sure on this episode and let y'all know. But we got to take this right here off. The other ones can stay on because it's going with the uh, front bumper cover. So this and uh, on the other side as well. And then that allowed me to move the, the lip, you know, off the fender and then pull it out. Now... If you see the front uh, intercooler, it looks crooked. It's because the crash bar underneath is crooked. It's been hit once upon a time right here, as you can see. And uh, when I did the cut for the intercooler, I did it straight, but with it being bent right there, it makes it cockeyed. So any of y'all have a crash bar for this car let me know in the comments below i would like to purchase it so that i can actually fix that that is an eyesore to me and i can't stand it so let me know if any of y'all have a crash bar y'all want to sell me at a really good price and i want to buy it okay all right so we're going to go ahead and knock that out get this bumper cover off and uh, we'll move on We got the front bumper cover off exposing everything that gives me all the room that i need to uh, mount that radiator fan up and i won't be fighting with just this little space right here so but yeah this is uh the air dam that i did a uh, previous episode that helps catch all the air from the front uh the front opening piece right there it kind of keeps it all in one area it doesn't allow it all to escape on the side and everything and Basically after the intercooler right there, I have my oil cooler and the oil filter relocator kit and the custom dual radiator set up right here and uh, these radiators are mocked off of a Volkswagen Sirocco They use these uh, for the sand rails and I took two of those and welded them in parallel to give it more capacity because that's the problem I was having with such a small radiator was it wasn't enough to uh, cool off the engine properly. So I added another one in parallel and that did the trick. But, uh, you know, whenever I'm in traffic and driving it, it does get a little bit past the middle mark because the fan can't keep up with uh, both of the radiators with this opening right here. Like I said in a previous episode, I could seal this off and everything, but uh, I'd rather not. That's why I'm going to put the... Uh, front mount uh, radiator fan in it's gonna push the other one's gonna pull and that will allow it to cool properly and that should solve that issue altogether and this is how I have the routing for the intercooler right there from the intake coming through right there through the side that's why I had to go with the smaller radiators I didn't want to cut up the fender wells so it's through the side right there so basically let me start from the turbo so turbo goes through the bottom right there into the intercooler through the intercooler comes back around up through the side up to the throttle body right there and i have my blow off valve right here so it's a uh a simple setup but i had to run this radiator setup in order to uh route the intercooler piping the way that i did to make it all work so 
like I said, I wasn't a fan of uh, some of the pitchers and uh, other people's jobs that I saw where they cut the body up. I just did not want to do that. So that's the reason I went with what I went with. And uh, as you can see, this crash bar right here is where it's been hit. That's what makes it kind of crooked. So if you guys have one, let me know. I, I want to buy it. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to mount that radiator fan up. I'm going to zip tie it in. I don't have the springs like uh, this one. So I'm just going to zip it straight on. Should be just fine. And the way I'm going to do the wiring basically is where the power feed is that feeds straight to the fan from the relay. Basically, let me explain this setup real quick, okay? So here's my thermal switch right here. It's a 200 degree thermal switch. So once this uh, hits 200 degrees, it opens up the switch. The switch then powers on the relay, which then takes the power from the fuse panel and feeds it to the fan. So where the power feeds to the fan, I'm just gonna splice that and tee it off parallel and feed the power to the front one as well and bring the ground back down to the ground side. And that's gonna make a simple setup where it bolt engages off the same relay and uh, it's gonna feed off the single fuse right here, which is a 20 amp fuse. And I think that's, that's plenty because I believe it's just like a 10 amp uh, fuse is what it was really rated for the circuit so 20 amp should be fine to power both of them we'll see how it goes and uh, that will be the setup so after it's all said and done we'll test it out and see how it works out so let's go ahead and mount this thing up and wire it in So before I go ahead and wire this thing in, I got to make sure that it's wired up for the proper polarity because this thing could be wired in push or pull. So basically what I'm assuming is the blue wire is the positive wire and the black wire is the ground wire. So on the connection here, I have the ground wire connected to the blue wire and the power wire connected to the black wire. So that should reverse the polarity. I got my battery pack on. Let's go ahead. And I made these little temp connectors with these wires so I can use my battery pack and test it. So let's go ahead and try it. And I'm watching the blade as well because it felt like it's pushing. Yep, I was correct on that. So basically I have it wired up correctly so that's the way I'm going to wire it into the system and it's going to work properly. It's going to be pushing and the other fan will be pulling. Alright so the wiring for the fan goes through the bottom right here underneath the radiators. It comes out right there. You can see that. That's where it comes out at. And then I have the wiring right here. They're uh, spliced in on the original power and ground wire for this radiator here. And I have it taped off right there, taped together. Here's the connectors right there. So, and basically I'll just go right here, feed it through, make my connection down there, and tidy up the wires, and it should be good to go. And after I get it connected up, we'll crank it up, let it warm up, and see how they both power on and go from there. It's up to temperature now. Both fans are on. That one is pushing. That one's pulling. I can feel the air moving pretty good. Twenty amp 
fuse seems to be holding up. I had a 30 right here just in case it popped. Looking good. Air fuel ratio is okay. before once it got up to temp it stayed the fan stayed on the whole time Let's see if this one will actually cycle if it'll cool it down enough to where it shuts it off I don't know it's just crazy because I feel air blowing back a little bit I guess it's just I don't know restricting it's like out the edges right here. I can feel the, the air blowing back at me. But I feel it blowing through right there as well. I don't know. Maybe this fan ain't that good. It is spinning in the proper direction though because I checked all that as y'all saw me do that. Just to verify that it actually is, it's pushing. Pulling would blow that away. So it's it's doing it properly. See? All right, so I turned the engine off and within less than a minute, this thing, the fan shut off. Never before had uh, it ever done that with the single fan. It would run for minutes and then it would finally shut off. Within less than a minute, it shut off so that tells me that it is way more efficient than what it was before but the only way to see if the problems are completely solved is with a drivability test and we're not there yet so soon we'll be there but not quite yet um, I still need to uh, try to knock this fender out a little bit more and as you can tell it's got a little bit of a crunch right there I don't know I might try to uh, latch something in here use a slide hammer and uh, get that to look like that and uh, also kind of just knock the fender outward a little bit so that it fits uh, nice and flush on this side like it does with the other side so we're almost there man uh, you know just finding out on the last episode that my rear brake calipers are leaking I have to redo those and I'm gonna tell you I work on this car more than I drive it z31 problems and i should make a shirt called hashtag z31 problems if you know you know you know what i'm talking about but we're almost there i mean i'm, I'm working on it i'm trying to get it to where it's reliable and i can drive and enjoy it worry free but i don't even know if that exists with a z31 honestly uh just old nissan z cars in general man you know we're getting there though but uh, I'm going to go to a birthday party real quick and then I'm going to come back and then we'll work on that fender. And then after that, we'll put it all back together and uh, see if I can make those tires fit with the, uh, the camber setup. But I'm thinking that I'm just going to get me some uh, 255 front tires and uh, just solve it that way. I don't like running a lot of negative camber. The only reason I'm running a lot of negative camber in the back is because that's just how it is uh, with it lowered with the control arm set up. So uh, I'm gonna have to eventually just bite the bullet and buy that kit and be able to get the suspension nice and set up, nice good uh, camber set up and everything. So I don't have to worry about tires wearing out real quick. And uh, yeah. Just time and money, man. Time and money. All right, uh, let me go to this birthday party. We'll get back to it, and we'll get this uh, this thing all done. And I'm going to find out about that front lip, too. All right, so the JDM lip kit that everybody's been asking me about, I'm going to take the time real quick and show y'all where I got it. And, of course, I'll put the link in the uh, description below. But, uh, basically, the Z-Store is where you go to, and it's the thezstore.com. And it's under uh, body kit spoilers. Let's see, body kit spoilers and wings. You select the year model, and then basically you go to front air dams, 
and it's basically the first one that comes up the uh, JDM style front lip I have the fiberglass one it was $234.97 you can get you one of these bad boys put it on your Z31 and make it look cool alright so I'll put the link in the in the uh, description below like I said but uh, we're gonna get back to this project here the Z31 turbo we got to pull the fender out a little bit so I came up with an idea I put a bolt through the backside right here and then I put some nuts on the end of it and I have a sliding hammer with an adapter for a vice grip so I'm gonna lock it on there use some different angles when I pull it and see if I can get this to straighten out a little bit because this is what it's supposed to look like right here so uh, we'll see how well that works out <clears throat> and uh, also I got a a body uh, hammer and this little flat piece to put on the back side so I could just try to get some of these little profound things out the way get it looking a little bit better bring some of the shape back to it and get this side to be more flush like that side is so let's go ahead and start it and see how well it works out Right, so the front bumper cover is on the fan is installed I did I will I was able to successfully push out some of the dents and I got a little aggressive with the hammer right here as you can see the dimples but uh, you know it's a step in the right direction I'm learning body work as I go I need to YouTube some videos and uh, get better with this stuff because uh, these old cars definitely need body work along the ways and I'd like to be able to do both sides but you know it is what it is this is a very solid uh fender and uh they're hard to find because I, str I try looking around for fenders from time to time and usually when i see them for sale they are uh rusted out and whatever but this is a very solid fender and this car in general is a very solid car going through everything i've taken care of most of the rust issues that i saw whenever i was building uh the car and uh i took care of all those as i went and for the most part it's a pretty solid car so uh Yep, just need to get the little uh, bit of dings and everything eventually taken care of and eventually get this thing to where I can paint it. But uh, happy with the progress we made. You know, we got the fan installed. We got the fender massaged a little bit. Things fit a little bit better now on the bumper cover as well on that side. So I got some things kind of lined back up on that end. And uh, we got this thing. The coilover is uh, maxed out uh, as far as they'll go with these bolts hitting the... Uh, the the strut tower but uh even still uh it's very close on the fitment so right there any good solid bump in the road that would make contact with the fender uh it's inevitable with these tires so i'm gonna have to remedy that with some 255s on the front and then i'll have an extra set of rear tires for the rear so that's going to be the game plan is get those tires in that way i can get that taken care of and the uh, the seal kit for the rear brake calipers. Uh, hold on. So we'll get the seal kit for the rear brake calipers, and then um, from there, I'm gonna start. Uh, well, once I drive it, make sure everything's good. 
with uh, the cooling side of things, which I'm pretty sure they are because of the way it was acting. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start doing the research to uh, get a game plan on wiring in that mega squirt. And then once that mega squirt's in, it's gonna be fun. I can't wait for that to happen. And uh, shortly after that, you know, I'll get the Heim joint kit in for the suspension. I decided I'm just gonna end up doing that. I just need to put some money aside to uh, invest in that so I can get that kit and I'll weld in that full Heim joint kit and that's gonna take care of a lot of the flex issues in the suspension because it's gonna be Heim joint solid and uh, the only downside to that is uh, you sacrifice comfort on the street but at this point this car it's 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 a sport project play with toy so you know it's it is what it is I, I'll sacrifice the feel on that for uh, the experience any day all right guys I'm gonna wrap up this episode I hope y'all are enjoying that Z31 content uh, next episode is up in the air I don't know what car it's gonna be on next it may be the Z31 it may be something else so thank you guys for sticking around I know this one's probably a little lengthy and I always appreciate it so like comment subscribe and share y'all stay tuned for the next one peace out